your space. Your space. See, we still not being able to put a finger on it. Okay. So we go to a wedding and maybe we're wearing top and the wear and we will make sure we wear those flashy clothes on top and we're probably wearing socks, socks with holes but we make sure that we are wearing the most expensive shoes and whatever we do. So that's the prediction, right? And then you don't want to get embarrassed. So you have this sense of embarrassment because you're projecting something about yourself or hiding something about yourself. This is like where you're getting at. And you discovered how important privacy is. So it's so funny. I had one sequence where about four years ago, a friend of mine on Facebook, you know about all of Facebook? You know Facebook? Everything is fake on Facebook. You know, even what you say about yourself is fake on Facebook. So please follow me on Facebook. So on Facebook, my friend puts a note which goes like this. That awkward moment when you discover that your newly wedded neighbor, he's in the neighborhood, right? His wife is still friends with her ex on Facebook. Okay, he's put this message out and everybody is like defying and laughing. You know what message I put in the I hope your friend is your friend on Facebook. <laughs> what when he reads this message? Doctor, okay, you've been a guest at his wedding, right? So the moment it goes from the tangible Indian joint family social scene into, for instance, Facebook, you suddenly become very bold and daring. Okay, you forget it because the illusion of privacy of Facebook is because of the password. Make sense? You think you're in a private world and this is what the digital world has done. It gives you the illusion of privacy because of the hang of a password. But there's nothing private about it. So let's take it further. One day, and we were a talk in privacy, and I have been obsessed with privacy as Ranjan discovered in retro vision. And oh my god, I've been to privacy for like 14 years and 15, plus 18 years into free and open source software. These are very strong issues. And the design challenges are massive. So one day I decided to ask Mr. Vijayanthi what is privacy? Can I define it in text? Terms in India, I couldn't. Why? Because privacy is a shifting target through society. Okay. For instance, physically speaking, your body. The senses of privacy. How is it done? By creating a sense of shame. If you remove the sense of shame, there is no sense of privacy. So go to tribalists. There is no concept of privacy. Now, because of this sense of shame, in our childhood, if a woman's bra strap would be visible, that was like sheer embarrassment and scandal. Okay? So the whole privacy, to me, the value. Okay, Charlie, all the women would look up every woman and, you know, not how to care Today, women are proudly showing off their straps. Right? Even like red sports are in lockdown. So, is privacy empirical? Not at all. Just the day before, in the place in America, they said finally, breastfeeding in public is legal. You know, and we are like, okay, in the backward, you know, like this is like a crazy thing. But this everybody else in the world understood. Today, that is one of the privacy now. So, privacy is a shifting target. I'll tell you something really fascinating about this. In the olden days, barely 50 years ago, you would never enter a toilet or a restroom with someone else. It would be the most scandalous and the most shocking and obscene and harrowing thing to do. But today when a plane lands at the airport, 240 passengers drive by two or 100 walk together into the bathroom. Correct? And the worst is they are talking to each other while in the evening. And even have people like calling so they could have the phone from their pocket. I would love to know if the other person said, I want to know what the answer is. Right? Are you busy? Nah. So the interesting thing is that people are together in the toilets today and you don't realize it at all. 
And now you see at least little stock. So my next question is, very soon the stock will also become a glass. And if you think I'm kidding, go to the most expensive five-star resorts and hotels. The bathroom literally in the bedroom now has a glass thing, right? And you'll be shocked like, what's the big idea here. At which point I'm going to say the next thing you'll see people swallow into some canvas to show what happened to the pastry in this day on Instagram. Right? So, privacy is a shifting target, which is understood. In the olden days, you would not eat food in front of someone. You would actually go in a corner. Don't you see laborers who go in a corner, huddle down and eat? Today, they probably want to show that we are at a restaurant, or at a cafe, or at a Starbucks, and this is what we are eating, and even photographs of what my brother likes to call food porn. You know, like the camera is moving into your mouth when you are putting something. As if that is going to give you a sense of taste. I don't know what this camera can think of. But there you are. So privacy is a shifting target. Is this is understood. Privacy is different to every culture. What is privacy to let's say the Middle East is not at all privacy to the day where I was on a new beach. Okay? And then even those definitions will change. So I ask you now, big challenge. Now that you're away from fear, social stigma, cultural changes, because it's a temporary thing, everything changes. Invariably, economy is speaking. What is privacy? Now try it. Beautiful. She is such a thoughtful thing that when you work in design, I want to be a design strategy. She says it's the opposite of seeking validation and what else is it? And it can change with the changing environment. And it can change with the changing environment and ecosystem around. This means that you need to have the ability to change your definition of privacy in India. Is this correct? First of all, if something that changes, how do you design for it as designers? in apps and ecosystems and even other cities. Make sense to you? So you see, the challenge that you have in design professionals is going to be infinite. Previous generation of designers have not really bothered to think about this. Today we are discussing the fundamental issue that we brought up for anybody, whether an engineer or a vice president or an entrepreneur or a co-founder, doing anything which impacts society, especially digitally. Especially digitally or urban. You will now have cameras in cities everywhere. Okay, not only that, there is more to it. There is a fantastic research I was sharing with many about two days ago. Many works in uh, uh, women at the workplace. That's a fantastic thing. And there are a lot of issues of for women at the workplace. But there is also the feeling of vulnerability and how women need to work. So, her slogan is very interesting. It is men work fantastic. The idea that workplace should be fantastic and not just socially uh, having evil for women to work. It should be doing more of that. Very big challenge that she has got. So, we should probably see if we can tell her next week. Here is something that we never realize. Women feel as if they are being watched when they work in offices with the open cubicles and plans and floors. Their productivity takes a hit. The very moment they get up, they always feel we have to be totally, properly dressed, we should be absolutely presentable at every second because we are always being watched. You know the feeling you can have if you are being watched? And nobody understood this. There was a designing open plans and open spaces and everything. At which point I think it was video somebody else. I wonder who it was, it was Monica, I don't know, mentioned something very interesting. That there is a sense of privacy which men don't understand to be the best from the stage at all. The women become very alert of their own privacy. This is fascinating, isn't it? So if you think very deeply, there is a physical aspect of it, the social aspect of it, but the most important aspect of it is not the physical resolution, but something when you have freedom of physical and social. Okay, and a lot of design is being impacted negatively or positively.
only reason I hope now you get it. Stop thinking of security. Start thinking of privacy in design and how comfortable, how intimate, how wonderful and what a user experience it would be and whether it is leading to a positive or a negative impact. Something that right now is rusty, sharp and the car. So, I actually closed my eyes once and went into very, very deep conversation and asked myself, when is privacy born? Can any one of you guess the answer and so you may know it's very easy to think about this. When is privacy born in you? When it started very close. When it started very close. So the Romans started very close, very early, but there was no sense of privacy. They could still walk around me. That's it. See, that's the other thing. You are still facing a post-Victorian, post-Edwardian hangover in India about clothes. Very soon you get over it. This country has always been for thousands of years very comfortable with nakedness in you. You can still see it in this country. People are very open. It's just the urban movement under the Macaulay influence who are facing it. Nothing to do with this. And by the way, there are people who may be very privileged, proper, and work for something, and then they are taking holidays and new places. So, and by the way, nothing to do with work and new places. These are gaining this. When it should be born, is it the structure that we decide to be structured in the
without speaking. So suddenly you look and in your inner ear, in your inner mind, you hear the word can't, can't, can't. The thought has been invoked in you. You listen. And so a child in the city will be gathered, will talk, will be very innocent and tired of human. But Dr. 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 last night also was very uh, the first seven years. They will be very open to what they say. And they know that with thought comes responsibility. Then there is a moment when a thought comes and you hold it back. This is the birth of private thought. The birth of private thoughts is the birth of privacy. That's it. That's it. There is nothing else to it. No issue of security or fear. No issue of acceptance or acceptance. It could be even an irrational silly thought. But the first time you had a private talk, you kept it private, you have given birth to privacy. Now, whatever you choose to keep at different times in this relationship, 50 moments, private, only available in your thought process is your privacy. And then you bring Buddhism into it. The air fall path, very, very clear. <coughs> the right thought, the right intention the right words, the right action. So please understand this is your user interaction designers too. User interface designers too. Any interaction is nothing but a verbal thought in verbs. Do you understand this? Let me explain this. In a computer, there is no crash cam. These are just pixels blowing. The concept that you drag and drop is in your mind. There is nothing being dragged and dropped. There is no gravity inside the computer. It's not the third particle collider. So, you are actually converting a thought. The thought is redefined into verb. Drag and drop and empty trash. There is no trash can. What you've done is, in computer, you just deleted the pointless profile. Do you understand this? Do you understand engineering? Okay, the bits and bytes are left and the A is over existing. That's it. Some electrical signals went and some patterns will change. But in your mind, all of this I logged in. I logged out. You are designing thoughts as verbs, not as words. So once you have a private thought, you can make it a private speech, private intention, you can make it a gesture, you can make it an interaction. So even if a man were to look lustily at a woman and the age of equality, if a woman were to look lustily at a man, it is very obvious that there is a private thought, but even a private intention, not even an action that is being understood. So now you would also go to mask the private intention. This layer is privacy. Private thought, keep the intention private, even keep the action private. We are beginning to understand this, isn't it? Very invaluable insight into design. What are you designing? So, Tinder is very incredible. You may not have the courage. The heart and the courage to go and tell a man or a woman that you love him or her. Because 
if you could tie your sandwich in a knot, you know, the whole fear of rejection. But oh my God, in your private thought and your private intention, you have been, in many words, empowered to now sit like some royal person at photographs and start singing a song, Bhardiya Chan, Shkodiya. So left and right, oh my god, how amazing is it? It's like Cleopatra choosing who is she going to speak with tonight from a hundred male slaves. I want you, 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 get them fresh and anointed up in my room. Right? So that's the power, but in front of everybody, serving, serving, the private thought, the private intention is not. Do you realize design is all about designing your privacy? influencing the mind of another person to design. So your role, if you ask me, is you should not say I'm a user experience designer. No, I'm not an interaction designer because you missed the point. Henceforth, your business card should say I'm a privacy designer. And this is what is bugging brands. He said, is there a job for someone who is a designer and privacy? I said, isn't that what all designers are? We are all privacy designers. Right, Pancha? Life is clear. Worth it for you to space your reading of the first one. Do you understand this? We are privacy designers. We will make you feel your privacy when you enter the online banking portal. And that feeling that you design is your user experience. So this is even before user experience. But it is profound. Because you are sharpening, sharpening like a pencil or blunting like a pencil the mind of another human being. It's the most wicked power to be given to people and it must be used responsibly. This is clear. Any questions on what is privacy? Any question in your mind? So now let's look at non-digital words. Sitting in an auto is a design of privacy. Catching an Uber, not even getting into it. So many other people are looking at posh in terms of the taxi aggregators. You know, and whether they need training and everything. Much less to ask you to pull out your license. You don't relax. Why should I pull Slowly, 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 the design of society is removing and eroding your sense of privacy. And you don't realize it. In my kid going to one school and have a very SMS. I actually feel sorry for my kid. More than anything else, because now we are all being trained to become helicopter parents. And the worst example of this is in the BPR industry, where young millennials who are used to a life of entitlement are asked to sit in a chair and every word you say, every action you do, police the sting, I'm going to be watching you, and then I'm going to have software and controls to rate you. To train you like a trained dog and a monkey, exactly what you can do. This sense of freedom is also the first thing that you think about. You are no longer an individual. You are all blank, compact discs on which society will stand its program. You understand, privacy is no one. You don't realize how each one of you is made to behave in public spaces. Go to a cinema hall, get the popcorn, buy the ticket, get frisked. I've already got a frisk in here. Unless I've got bombs in my popcorn, I don't think I can steal something else from the room. But you have to accept it. Sit in your chair, 
when the break happens, your program goes at this time before your meal break. And now, refresh yourself with coffee. This is no longer freedom. The designer has been breaking your ribs. The eightfold part of Buddhism has been invaded. Right in the is to turn into wrong in I hope this is clear. Except that you don't even know how to define it, how to fix this. So I'm going to throw design challenges to you now. So how do you bring individual freedom? And I call privacy, now this is my definition of privacy, in the depths of my life. Privacy is your right, your fundamental right, right to liberation. Please understand. Privacy is your fundamental right, not to freedom. It's your fundamental freedom for your liberation. Privacy is your fundamental right to your liberation. This is super powerful stuff. As designers, can you design without using cognitive hacks? I don't know what to do this nuance about cognitive hacks. So the nuance of cognitive hack is to give the illusion of choice to people. Right? You've said it. So if I tell someone this is a charity, you must give 10 minutes to say about charity and love. But if you go to people and say, this is a charity, you have the right to have the choice to give 10 rupees and you also have the choice to take it back whenever you want. You have hacked someone to give 10 rupees. It's an illusion of choice. This is also an invasion of privacy. Now let's take an extreme example. What happens if your total privacy is now violated? Exactly what you get by the get in this day. Your private action, your private intention will be betrayed, and your private words will be betrayed, but most importantly, your private thoughts will be betrayed. So you will say, okay, what is conspiracy? Here it is. That's not the truth. Think again. The design of artificial intelligence and machine learning is created not for machines, but for this new term that we know as anticipation design. Have you heard of anticipation design? Design for anticipation. So for instance, the nest in your home anticipates when it's cold for you when you're coming home, when you want your coffee or whatever else, how automation is going to be there. Do you an anticipation? As you come closer to the door at the morning, the door will open. That's anticipation. So these are simple motor controls. Add artificial intelligence to it. Add machine learning to the design. I can read your intention. Intention means thought. Not only that, I can read your sentiment. Are you aware of design for sentiment analysis? Computers are now being designed with artificial intelligence to know how, what is your sentiment towards Donald Trump or Modi? Or what's in the result of what is now? I can go find it. Right? So from intention, and then you have these devices which can connect to your brain, it's a matter of time, where the patterns are being interpreted as whether you want to move the mouse. You see those designs? Now what we don't understand is the way sensor and these technologies work. We are literally invading the aspects of the more and more
the world will go into total war, trial. Just stand up and say everything you feel about the thing. Right? Just say it. Just even try. Why not say action? Like how to kill you? No, don't kill. Just say how to kill you. That's enough. You see the power of this? And you can even make an intention about it. That's also enough to, to even break up. So all relationships, this is the beauty of liberation. Once you know this, life is good. All relationships are a legal combination of illusion and illusion. Isn't that true? Or no matter how much people say we are very in love with each other, we are good friends, we are this, we are that. Total, honest bullshit. Speak the truth. Then we talk. You can't. Privacy, therefore, is a matter of first, human survival. So if privacy is gone, survival is gone. That's the irony of it. It's a thought in front of you and you You see what the is again? So now you need to have the courage and the courage to say, this is his opinion. Now I need to have my private part. And a guy who's a Punjabi Christian has given weird colorful quotes by some people. I don't want to listen to it, but I can't say that. Do you understand this? Okay, therefore, privacy it has to be your fundamental right. Starting with your instinct to survive as an individual, to your need to survive as a family. And from there, to your definite need to survive as a society. You don't realize it. Then as a nation, are you getting this? How deep is this? So that is the first level. And the second level is privacy is a fundamental right because it offers you a fundamental right to your liberation. So the first time you realize your mind is not a society. You will realize you cannot change your mind. You will be making your own. Why not? Think about what I just said. You cannot change your mind to make it your own. Why is that? Because you have been trained by the mind of society to train your mind. You get this? It's very powerful on again. So your age, the same day you were born, the same time you were born, the same country you were born. Let's go into the room and try to find a girl in different countries. Let's go to different worlds in the world. Let's find a girl also born in India, but now similar to Scotland. And let's talk to each one of them. Each one has a mind made by someone else. That collection, the collective, the collective unconscious. The mind cannot be conscious. The mind, as you know in design, is habit forming. You cannot make a fundamental right to integration habit forming. That's just a mission. For the first time, you need the power, the intelligence, the understanding. The courage, the creativity, the innovative thought of knowing my fundamental right to liberation is not about speaking the truth of what I feel about politics, relationships, people, society. It cannot be about what could be again my mind talking to its prejudice events. My fundamental right to liberation is a fundamental right to knowledge. 
bien. Because you don't realize how 
from the time that you made. Fourth, when they ask you for your mobile number, you walk into a Decathlon store, a Liberty Shoe store, places you could not even imagine, and you can mention a few, and then what the guy there does is he's typing your invoice, and then very cleverly, impatiently, he poises his hand and says, Sir, mobile number. And you quietly give it quickly because you've been hacked. So I tell them, no, I'm not giving it back. And he says, sir, we need it in case you want to return your goods. I say, I promise you I won't return the goods. Is that what you want to tell me? Then he says, no, we'll give you a discount. I said, how much will you give me? 10 rupees? Please tell me 10 rupees more. I'm not giving you the number. You get this? Have you ever thought of fighting that? Yeah, I've dealt with this before, like security guys that have run this building itself and go on and I told them that I don't want to give you my number. He says, please, you have to do whatever you have to do, what do you have to do? You see how society works. So here's my solution to this. I got myself a Reliance Metatron. 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 Reliance you understand, now you can go and collect that number, then the database is screwed again. Do that. Okay. Go look up the other thing that you already done on this website and there are spammers numbers. So you can say, hold on, give me my other number open, look up spammers and give them a look of the data. They should be the ones who are getting annoyed. Why am I getting annoyed? So fifth, I have installed the T-R-A-I D and D app on my mobile. TRAI, they have an app called Do Not Disturb. I have an installer. Somebody sent me an SMS. I just fired the DND and by law, as in by law, I just reported it. It's a one second click and after five days, which is a headache that Airtel and TRAI and, uh, go through because they now have to validate and shut down that guy's number or even take away his telephone number or find them or whatever they are. So now people are getting scared of spamming. But you know what I love to do? It's my to be 